Are you overswinging in your backswing or when you see the golf club travels far longer than your friends? Very common issue. It's all around the relationship of how far your arms travel relative to your chest turn. And in this video with special guest Oli Tucker, we're going to show you the best exercise to reduce that arm overrun and strike that ball clean every single time. Let's get stuck in. Okay, Ollie, so what we're gonna do, mate, is we're gonna talk about arm overrun, right? And we see a lot of players, they will make a functional pivot, so they're getting enough turn in the backswing, shoulders turning 90 degrees, hips turning approximately 45 as a reference for the recreational golfer. But then we can tend to see that sometimes the arms will travel independently. And not only does that encourage a breakdown of the structure of the arm sometimes, but also them to get too far behind the center line of the chest, meaning that as they come back down into impact, they get this look here, where the arms would be stuck behind the body. Very common that yep. we see that, isn't it? And uh, you had a recent golfer in here that was working with you, and you had a great drill utilizing the stick down on the ground to match up the chest or the upper body rotation with the length of arm swing so it wasn't traveling too much. Could Correct, just give yeah. us a bit of uh, a rundown about the process that you went through with this golfer? Yeah, so exactly right. A good player, single figure golfer, and like you say, he made a really good turn to the top of the swing. But then for maybe sort of an echo of his old swing where things would get a little bit long, uh, the arm just kept going a little bit more height and like you say, sort of pulled behind this trail elbow, almost behind his, uh, behind his rib cage at the top Correct. of the swing. Yeah, yeah. And what were the effects that we were seeing in regards to let's say club path and angle of attack for this one? Um, so it tends to get some issues with striking in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, so angle of attack wasn't quite uh, down enough as it should be and the ball striking wasn't quite there for a good enough player as he was. Yeah. Um, but skillful enough to still play some good golf. Mm -hmm. But yeah, with the club getting trapped behind, or his arms getting trapped behind his back here, getting into impact was always a little bit tricky and yeah. tends to have to sort of, sort of help it out with his hands getting near impact yeah. rather than having the freedom of getting the elbow a bit more in front of the hip yeah. and be able to strike down the ball a little bit more like he needed to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, for example, if we're looking down at the numbers here and we'll look at angle of attack, so I hit two degrees down on that golf ball. So as the golf club was coming into impact, it had that slight, nice descending angle. Now, where was this player hitting the ball in the face? Uh, it's quite mixed, actually, but could get a lot of Healy ones as well. Yeah. So when the club's, or when his arm's stuck around here, to release the club, mm -hmm. if we show us there, to get the club back out in front, it would be this way. That way, yeah. So anything from here to here throws a club out away from the ball, brings the heel of the club into play a little bit more. Oh, yeah, I can feel that coming in, that's for sure. Uh, so this player, uh, he's quite skillful. He did make mention of this position here where you'll see the majority of the professional golfers getting the hand more in front of yep. the chest by this section of the swing. You can see naturally the mass of the club head has moved behind uh, the hands by that section of the swing, giving lots of room. And he was trying everything under the sun to try and fix this, but you educated him on the cause and effect of the issue, which for him, you identified was a lot more about this arm overrun to yep. the top, wasn't it? Correct. So on a, on a demo like he did there, he wouldn't have this overrun with the arms because you can feel it slowly, certainly. And he could easily get back into the position like he rehearsed seen on YouTube, seen on, you know, the pros do it. But again, there was this real swing, just wasn't happening with the arm position top of the swing. We'll get back to that video in just a second, but I just want to tell you quickly about my online training platform, Perform Golf. Being a player myself and going through the struggles of working on my game all the way up to playing on tour, I understand that nagging feeling that you're putting work in that's not actually making a difference to your swing and your golf game. So that's why I've created an all-encompassing membership covering every aspect of the game to help you fast track your progress and get you shooting lower scores. It's available on all the app stores and on the web. The link is down below. So sign up now, experience the difference yourself. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so let's uh, get this stick here and let's show the audience exactly what you need to do with this training aid. Okay, so you can pop out under your right arm. You can okay. uh, do the demo. Yep, so, so right under the right arm correct. and I use this uh, quite a lot myself, but talk through about the setup starting off from where we would stand in this position. Yeah, so like you've done there, sort of parallel to the ground, quite tight in as far as you can go up the arm there. That's a slightly shorter stick because it helps with actually hitting the shot. Otherwise, the long one's entertaining for us to watch as a coach, but they do get in the way a little bit. Yeah. And you see some uh, funky moves. So perfectly fine there. You've got to do your best to take your regular hold, regular setup from there if you can. Mm -hmm. And in the address position, having a slight downward angle of this stick is okay. You don't want players to then put it back to level Correct. or you want it yep. to, yeah, okay. So get it 
level here, and I must make mention that we'll talk about this throughout the swing, but having it underneath that armpit crease is important for another element of the golf swing, the connection of the upper yep. arms. Now, that doesn't mean, guys, that I want you to put your arms in like this, the T-Rex, and try and swing to the top and keep it connected. You want to try and take as close to your neutral uh, grip and hold on yep. the golf club as possible. So then down into position, we can see that when I do so, it will actually move a little bit across the line of the chest here as well. And it's uh, still at right angles to your spine as well. Correct, correct, correct. So from this position, taking my normal grip, getting down in to my posture, and then that first move back, right, uh, let's say that we get back to lead arm parallel and everything's looking quite good. You can see I've got a bit of space here. Then this player was doing what? So there'll be a little bit more turn as they got nearer the top of their swing, but once they got to here, which is about your full turn, the arms would carry on going, you get this disconnect here, this is gonna drop, mm -hmm. and it certainly would also lift the buff. If you could keep it under your arm, mm -hmm. it would definitely lift the buff. Yeah, How start to raise up. up, exactly, yeah. And the thing is, is you can get that immediate feedback here, which is great. And whenever you are uh, working on your golf swing, you do need to consider having some sort of feedback, be that visual, or in this stage, or in this drill specifically, more about the feel and having that sensation of that lead arm hitting that stick in the backswing or straight away, that's a nice little reminder. Correct, yeah. Now, the one consideration here for players at home is that doesn't mean that we want you to swing shorter, right? You still need to create a big turn, but then it's been more mindful that the chest needs to lead that rotation, that's the engine for the backswing, and then the hands are staying more in front. Yeah, yeah. and like you've demoed there, that is that is slightly short and it will feel short, but like, like we all know, yeah. What you're feeling there and what they're going to see on camera if they do feel themselves is going to be or possibly feel like a short turn for them or a short swing. Yeah. And the relate or how far the club and the arms have gone around their body and the arc will be a little bit. But it's going to be a full on turn. Yeah. It just won't have this extended movement with the arms. Yeah. So mind muscle connection here for the back swing. A great reference that I use with players is feeling the back of the right shoulder is facing for the right hander here. Moving and starting the back swing will really help you rotate that chest early. If you combine that with some wrist hinge, well then you'll see that by this stage of the swing, if I come back to address, I really haven't moved those arms across my midline whatsoever. So address position, back of the right shoulder at the target, stopping into this. If you have hit this, readjust. Feel like it's more chest turn getting yourself into that position. Then from there, you'd say just small half swings to start off? Yeah, certainly, because getting used to swinging through with that can be a little bit tricky, so you can half swings, tap it down there, take some speed off it, definitely. Because mm -hmm. it's more about where you get to on the back swing. Correct. And I would say just do some uh, practice swings to start off with, not hitting a ball, and just get a feel of what it's like to make this motion without that lead arm hitting the stick. And then film it for yourself. So I'll hit one here anyway. And that there felt so short, but it felt very, very connected. Now, in reality, probably still got back to this. Yeah, you, you were close to touching the stick. Yeah, exactly. Um, but with a really good fall, you know, really good turn <laughs> yeah. uh, and quite connected. Yeah, and whenever you are doing your practice swings, you want to try and exaggerate as much as possible yeah. because the reality is in the swing, for someone who has had so much arm overrun yeah. for a long period of time, to then manage this and bring it back to more of a functional position for what they want to achieve, it is going to have to feel like they're making a turn that feels huge and their arms are down here yeah. relative to this excessive movement. Yeah. yeah, correct. I mean, the arms, like you say, with the history of this with the arms, that's gonna happen anyway. And you can almost show them one extreme to here where it's gonna feel like no arm lift at all for them whatsoever. Correct. With a big body turn and they'll go, they'll question it. Yeah. Um, and we never really see, I want people to like really take the piss and exaggerate going, oh, I'll show yeah. you no arm lift coach and do this. No yeah. one does it. Yeah. They always add, what they've been used to doing anyway. And that's kind of the middle ground we're looking for. Yeah, the amount of times that you use the words exaggerate, 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 more, more, more. Yeah. Oh, it feels like I am. And then you chuck it on camera, nowhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> Even the same sense. And I've been playing and teaching this game for a long time, right? And it's the same thing with me. As soon as I feel like I'm exaggerating something, uh, I usually need to do it a lot more, okay? Now, you can see I tried to cheat it then. I tried to put it <laughs> up there. So I had a lot more room. Just make sure that you always set up this drill correctly. Uh, let's hit one more here for us. Uh, shaft, level with the ground, get into your posture. I'm gonna rehearse this once, exaggerating that feeling. Nice and smooth. Touched a little bit then, but look, hands in front of the chest, very, very compressed through, four degrees down. Short face was a little bit open, but the rest of it was great. But the structure, good work.